In this video, we are going to learn about how you can build a sniper bot for Arbitrum mainnet. This is a concept video. I will add all the relevant links in the description and also the BitQuery Telegram channel link. This video just shows how you can listen to newly created pools on Uniswap v3 and get the token A and token B addresses and then swap the token A to token B. I am setting my token A as wrapped ether because I want to keep the example simple but if you have many more tokens in your wallet then you can cover much wider range of new pools. To convert your ether to wrapped ether you can go to wrapped ether token contract on Arbitrum Explorer and connect your web3 wallet from here and then you will have to deposit some amount. So after depositing here this much ETH and then click on this right button we will get this much amount of wrapped ether. I have already done that. Now after we have done that let's jump into the implementation here. So as far as the dependencies go I am using TypeScript here. We are also using Uniswap SDK v3 and also the Uniswap SDK core and also the smart order router from Uniswap. So we are using this .env for our environment variables and also the ethers. Our environment variables are as follows. You can get this RPC URL from Arbitrum Docs. I will add the link in the description. Add your own private key here of the account which has some wrapped ether on the Arbitrum mainnet. You will not want to share your private key online. So put the .env in git ignore along with node modules. Here this is the chain ID of Arbitrum mainnet. Here is also the swap router 02 address on the Arbitrum mainnet. I will add the Uniswap v3 deployment addresses link in the description. Here are some more configuration options we will go into details afterwards. Now let's jump into our config.ts file. So once we have our env file we are going to need a way to expose it to our application. So this is a basic config.ts file. After loading the environment variables here we are exporting them as constants and also configuring provider and our signer using ethers. Now moving on to index.ts this is going to be our main implementation file. And we start off by importing our token pairs from this get tokens function. We will go into this in a little bit but let's move further. And then on top of it we will also import the configurations required to run the swap. Which are going to be this. So let's go into this token stuff because that's what we want to do next. So we have this token from the token which we have and the token to the token which we want to swap it to. So the token from is always going to be wrapped ether as I have fixed that in the query in tokens.ts file. I am using a BitQuery API which is a BitQuery events API to be precise and that is giving us the newly created pairs data. Let's see how we are getting these tokens exactly. Let's jump into the tokens.ts file. So what we essentially exporting is this get tokens function which is, which is returning the tokens in smart contract. So we extract this token from Uniswap SDK and then we build on top of it something called as token with contract. And remember that whether it's wrapped ether or Uniswap token it's nothing more than a smart contract. So we not only want a token address here, we also want a contract instance so that we can call different functions like what is the allowance of a certain address for using the token on behalf of our wallet address and also like calling balance of function to know the balance of address for a token. So this wallet has as a helper function which takes a signer and check if a certain wallet has a specified amount of token in it. So we are getting these token 0 address and token 1 addresses through this API known as BitQuery Events API. Here Let's see the query a little bit in detail. So this is the query. It's on Arbitrum. This query here basically gives us the most recent transaction where pool created event was fired on Uniswap v3. That is when the new pool was created. And then I have used some basic JavaScript which I can find from here. You can set this as Node.js XUs and you can use XUs package to make a API fetch call and use this query to get the to get the newly created pairs data. So now getting back to the index.ts, we are running this main function here. So what does it do? So the way we want to run this is ts node index.ts 0.0001. This 0.001 is the amount of wrapped ether that we want to swap into our new token 1. So firstly if our tokens data is empty, then we throw error saying tokens are not initialized. And if the tokens data is fetched, then we populate our token from and token 2 constants. And then check if we have passed something as argument in the terminal which is this 0.0001. This is our argument. And if we didn't pass anything in the arguments then it will throw an error. And if we have passed a defined value then we put it in the amount in constant. Then we put it in the amount in constant. Then we check the balance of the wallet address for the specified token 0. And if the balance that the wallet has is not enough then we throw an error saying not enough wrapped ether. So if all the boxes are checked then we go ahead and start with the actual swap. 
we use something called alpha router from uniswap you can read more about how it works in the official documentation of uniswap then we use this router object to create a route which takes the specific details of a swap what it needs is the specific amount of token we are swapping from we are using this currency amount from the sdk second argument is the token you want to swap this into and we are also specifying here our trade type as exact input as we want to swap exact amount 0.0001 wrapped ether here to token 1 but if we had wanted to get a definite amount of token 1 then we would have selected this as trade type as exact output and then we select the recipient of the swap tokens and then slippage tolerance is basically how much price change can we tolerate we have set it as 5% in our .env file and then we have also selected this deadline for the swap we have selected this as 30 minutes in the .env file also so if we are able to swap the tokens before 30 minutes then good otherwise the transaction will fail and then we log for the check and then we check the allowance and if we don't have enough allowance we will have to call approve function on the token contract to approve the swap router address for the amount and value of token 0 and then we attempt the swap and if we have the allowance then we call the attempt swap transaction function outside and and this is where we have defined our attempt swap transaction we pass this transaction here which is our swap transaction so swap transaction here is basically populating the build swap transaction function to build the swap and then we attempt it here in this attempt swap transaction and send it to the network so let's try to run the script now we have got our token addresses token 0 and token 1 trying swapping we have sufficient width allowance okay the transaction failed now check this transaction hash on tenderly maybe to know exactly what happened wrong so you can see that the transaction is failing because pool has no liquidity so I have tried many more transactions. The transaction keeps on failing because the last pair that was created is still the same. So I will just show you guys the successful swap that I did yesterday while trying out the code myself. This is that successful transaction. 0x418 is my address. Thanks for watching. Like and subscribe and head over to our telegram channel if you have any doubts.